Michigan Weekend promo for WXON only 30 seconds. Hi there, I'm Fred Trost for Michigan Weekend. We've just started here on TV20, and this week we'll give you some tips on how to catch trophy trout. Maybe like this 7-pound, 15-ounce brown. Stan Levensee will also give us a few pointers on fly fishing for trout, and I'll give you some lessons on how to poach trout. I'm serious, trout poaching. Join us this week for the outdoors in Michigan on Michigan Weekend, Thursday at 7 on TV20, right here in Detroit. Michigan Weekend, show number 45. Hi there, I'm Fred Trost and I sure I'm glad you joined me for this edition of Michigan Weekend. Kathy Fleck is on assignment this week, so tonight you and I will be talking about trout fishing. We'll talk about where this 7 pound, 15 ounce brown trout came from. It's a master angler winner and it came from a stream in central Michigan. Michigan has more great trout streams than almost any other state. And fishing expert Stan Levensee will give us some pointers in fly fishing for Michigan trout. Now, if that doesn't suit your fancy, I'll give you some lessons in how to poach trout. I'll show you how you can poach trout and never get arrested. You'll never learn this on any other outdoor show. Michigan Weekend is brought to you in part by Meyer Thrifty Acres, your one-stop shopping store. By Michigan Out of Doors, Michigan's leading outdoor magazine, and by AAA of Michigan. We want to do more for you. You know, I think fishing is the greatest family recreational activity going, and so does the sporting goods department at Meyer Thrifty Acres. Just listen. For the beginning fisherman, you can't go wrong with a Zebco 76 spin cast reel. It makes a great gift, and it's only $244 at Meyer. Step up to the Zebco 33 if you're a more advanced angler. This week, it's only $988. And if you're into the master angler sized fish, you should check out the big Zebco 808. 1588 is all you pay for this high quality, heavy duty spin cast reel. Why pay more for fishing reels? They're on sale this week at Meyer Thrifty Acres. Since this is a special show on trout fishing, let's look at our map and see what master angler trout have been reported in the past week or so. Starting here in Muskegon County, we have a two pound, six ounce brook trout that was caught on a worm. Up in Oceana County, just above it, a 17 and a half pound steelhead was caught on spawn. A Great Lakes brown trout evidently came up into a stream up in uh, Mackinac County, 19 pounder, also caught on a night crawler. The only master angler trout reported caught on an artificial lure was a bucktail fly, took a seven pound, two ounce brown in Sheboygan County. But the big inland brown trout caught so far this year was taken right here in Ionia County. This is a seven pound, 15 ouncer, a huge brown trout taken in inland waters, the largest one so far this year. Now you can tell a brown trout, it's brownish in color if it's from uh, an inland lake or stream. It has bright red spots on it, which are much brighter than this when it's freshly caught. Also, this one you can tell is an old male, probably five, six years old, the DNR tells me. It has a hooked jaw on both the top and the bottom, and that's indicative of an old male brown trout. Now, Dick Face, who caught this fish on a night crawler, tells me that, uh, well, brown trout are very wary. They hang under the banks, under snags, and they stay there. You have to work your bait or your lure in close to them. And for this fish, it was no exception. Dick put his night crawler back under the bank, didn't even know that he uh, had one on until he tightened the line. Uh, big brown trout like this, even the small ones, just stay back in the snags and just slurp in that bait. But this is a, a real trophy, and this is the one to beat so far this year for a master angler inland brown trout. For catching this, of course, Dick will receive the Michigan Master Angler Patch from the DNR. We're also going to give him a complimentary year subscription to Michigan Out of Doors, along with the special MUCC publication, Trout Streams of Michigan. This should help him find some more hot spots for big trout. We're going to go up the Little Manistee River right now to fish with flies. Stan Levens is going to introduce me to this sport that's a little different, but it's fun. Well, Stan, you have a setup here. You have me with a wet fly, you with a dry fly. Going down that, below for him and on top for him. Okay, but does that mean that the, you're going to catch more than I am? Well, at this mid-afternoon time, uh, I'd give the edge to you with a wet fly. But as it approaches evening, I think the uh, I'm expecting a pretty good hatch to come out this evening with this warm afternoon. 
and then I think I'll overtake you with a dry fly. Okay, well, let, let's compare the two flies here. Here's the wet fly that I'm using. You're using a dry fly here. Right. Side by side, yours is very fluffy and uh, lots of hackles and feathers, and mine is now. What does yours imitate? What does mine imitate? Well, mine imitates actually the adult form of one of these aquatic insects, specifically one of the little mayflies that will hatch out mm -hmm. and fly around and light on the stream. Uh, yours uh, actually represents a little uh, minnow or a, a little fish, mm -hmm. and uh, so you have to impart a little life, minnow-like life to it by a little jerk. I get a little jerk, okay. Choose. Now you're you're going to work upstream and I'm working downstream. Right. Is this always the case with the wet fly? You work downstream. It's more conventional with the wet fly. Another type that we don't happen to have here is a nymph, for instance, mm -hmm. which is a larval form of the aquatic insect. Mm -hmm. In that one, you just let it go downstream and, and go with it as a dead insect. And uh, uh, but yes, you go downstream with a wet fly, and with dry flies, you ordinarily go upstream. Okay. Now, how are you going to fish the dry fly? Well, I'm going to, of course, one, I'm going to watch for rising fish to mm -hmm. let me know where they are. And without this, of course, I have to guess, and, and my experience tells me where they're likely to lie. And I have to toss the dry fly up above and have it light, very gentle light, and drift down with no drag on it. Mm -hmm. The minute I start getting leader drag on it, uh, uh, the fish really reject it. And one of the big secrets, I think, most of our stream uh, trout now are brown trout. Mm -hmm. And uh, you really have to take a lot of chances for a brown trout. You have to get it very close to the cover. Now, will I have the same problem as I'm working downstream? Do I have to work in the edges You have the to get in close to structure, into the bank, very mm -hmm. close to the bank. You're going to have to risk some cast inside of a log and so on. I won't be casting those as much as you will, right? Shouldn't I? No, that's right, because you're going to be just working it on a long sweep, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit longer, and you can actually work it uh, downstream a bit uh, before retrieving. So, no, you will not be casting as much as I will. Well, let's compare our rods and reels just before we take off here. Now, I have a very old reel. This is probably 30 right. years well, that's old. That's a minor part. It, it's merely holding your line. All the work is up in the line and the leader and the rod anyway, so that's a minor part. Part. Now, you have a sinking fly line there, mm -hmm. which, is, which is what you really need for a, a wet fly. I have actually a high density, uh, or low density, I guess you'd call it, floating fly line. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, I should point out, our leaders, are uh, both of them, mm -hmm. actually come to a very fine uh, end. They are tapered. Down to uh, two and a half pound, up. yeah. Mine's yeah, two and a half pound. Down to a two and a half pound test, which mm -hmm. is uh, about a, a 5X. And uh, uh, this is an absolute necessity. In fact, if we were good enough fishermen, we might even go down a little bit finer than that. Mm. Well, I'll stick with this. We'll see how it works yeah. out. Okay, well, let's uh, head out and we'll compare notes in a little good. bit. And so we parted ways on the stream, the expert going one way, me going the other. Which way the trout went, I'm not quite sure, but we'll be back to find out after this word from Michigan's leading outdoor magazine, Michigan Out of Doors. Hunting and fishing is featured each month in Michigan Out of Doors with articles by actual sportsmen, where to go and how to do it. Features on a wide range of outdoor topics such as nature lore, Michigan wildlife, and the latest legislative and environmental news affecting you. It's only $7.50 for 12 issues, $12.50 for 24. Send your check to Michigan Out of Doors, Lansing 48909. It's been Michigan's favorite outdoor magazine for over 30 years. Subscribe today. Trout fishing is a unique experience. You're not a landlubber fishing from the bank or from a boat. You become a part of the trout's environment, wading through their habitat. It's a real challenge. And to compound the challenge, an angler can use flies, little hooks covered with feathers, hair, and thread designed to look like food from a trout's point of view. Along the banks of a trout stream, you'll find a kaleidoscope of beauty, flowers, plants, wildlife of all sorts, and lots of trout food. Trout will eat a variety of tiny organisms they find in the water, but one of their favorites is insects, terrestrial insects that fall in the water, or aquatic insects in all forms. 
Trout will eat the nymphs and wigglers. That's the immature stages of aquatic insects. And they'll also go after the flies when they hatch. Now this is a favorite time for fishermen to mix artificial flies with the natural ones that are hatching. Flies are tied to imitate a wide variety of insects or even little fish. Fishermen select a fly that looks like what he thinks the trout are feeding on at the time. If caterpillars are crawling on streamside limbs, trout are probably looking for the unfortunate ones that fall in the water. This is when a caterpillar imitation would be a good bet. Stan Levensee is using a dry fly to entice some little stream trout in this special section of the Little Manistee River. He expects that mayflies might start hatching any time, so he's using a mayfly imitation. Dry fly fishing is a real art. You have to lay that fly on the water without making a lot of ripples with the line and leader. Lay it down gently and let it drift with the current. Then pick it up and cast again. Here I'm using a wet fly. It doesn't float. Instead, it travels under the water, imitating a small minnow. I'm moving downstream, letting the fly range back and forth as I go, while Stan, using a drifting dry fly, works upstream. Generally, wet flies are more effective than dry flies since trout gather most of their food below the surface of the water. But in fly fishing, the fisherman's skill makes the difference. This trout is a small one, probably legal size, but Stan is going for bigger ones, so he carefully releases it and it darts back in the current. Catching a trout on a dry fly is quite an accomplishment. But how am I doing with a wet fly? Well, to be honest, my major accomplishment on my first afternoon of fly fishing for trout was retrieving my little streamer from a very high branch. It wasn't easy. And that was my main accomplishment. But putting fish in the creel isn't the main criteria for success in fly fishing for trout. The whole experience is what makes fly fishing what it is. Well, I fished for bluegill with a fly rod fished for trout with worms and with spinners. My first time with a fly rod. And uh, the reason I haven't done it before is I've always had the impression it was difficult. And I have had, I have had my difficulties, no doubt about it. I've hooked trees, limbs, stumps in the water, hooked my creel once. Uh, I've had, oh, a half dozen fish hit, but I haven't, I haven't brought them in. Uh, they've got off right away. I don't know why that is. If maybe my hooks aren't sharp, or maybe the fly's a little too big. I don't know. But fishing like this, the most fantastic thing about it is it's all the thinking you do when you're out here. All the resolutions you make. I'm going to sharpen my hooks. I'm going to get some smaller flies. I'm going to, uh, I've got to bring my son fishing like this. Got to introduce him to fly fishing for trout. It's the thing about fishing out like this, you're just going for 10 inch trout, little teeny things, you know, you're not meat fishing, but you're concentrating and trout fishing is, as I've found, fly fishing for trout, you're, you're actually hunting, you're stalking them. You see those neat little spots, the undercut bank where a brown trout might be, or the long runs at the tail of a run where a rainbow might be. You're stalking them, trying to psych them out, trying to beat them. I guess in some respects, it's almost a game. But it takes a lot of concentration. I don't know what it is about fly fishing. 
It's beautiful. That's the one thing you hear fishermen talk about, a trout stream. I always say, oh, isn't that a beautiful stream? It is, the bird sounds. The birds you see, little birds, little teeny warblers. You see insect life. You think about things you just don't think about when you're, you know, during the week, hassling, working, trout fishing with a fly. I'm hooked on it. It's great. A lot of resolutions. I'm going to read magazines, read those articles on trout fishing. I'm going to get better. I'm going to catch trout. And it'll probably be during this next commercial. And if I don't catch one, I'll poach one. Right after this word from AAA. I, I hope Chuck likes the AAA card. Roger got one when he was 16, and I'll never forget the first time we used it. Roger, my folks said 10 o'clock. I think we better call my dad. Aren't we at the movies? I think we better call AAA. Yeah. Hey, thanks. What time is it? At the chime, 9.55. Oh. My own car keys. AAA. My own AAA card? A tradition that starts on the day you drive. You drive carefully, okay. son. Well, I said if I didn't catch a trout during this past commercial break here, I'd, ha I'd poach one. So that's what I'm going to do. But first, Let's find out how some good worm fishermen fill their creel with brown trout. Boy, this looks like the best fish of the day that you've got, isn't it? Yeah, it's the biggest one I've caught today. How many have you got so far? Nine, this will make ten. Of course, you didn't catch nine. No. Let's clarify that though. All right. Limit being five, okay. Okay. But uh, geez, these are nice, they're all brown trout. How big would you say this one is? I say 16. What is the secret to success? We've been watching you here for about a half hour and you've caught, I think, three of them. I think just keep going at it and you get a good day, you might catch lots. Well, you seem to be using the same technique the other people are using, a couple split shot sinkers, a night crawler. Yep, I think you might have to find a hole where they come over the dam, they might slow down over a hole or a stump or something. Right around there, you might get them. You keep your line tight? Uh... I keep it loose, and then when it tightens, that's when you um, you set the hook, because you can't tell on a trout their mouths are soft, so it's hard to tell when you get a bite. Well, geez, you're doing a beautiful job. You're showing these people how. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, there's no doubt about it. Fishing with live bait, with worms especially, seems to pay off a lot better for trout. In some respects, it isn't maybe quite as much fun, or at least it's a different type of fun to fish with flies. And this forced me in the position of uh, poaching a trout. Now, actually, the trout that I have in the creel here isn't poached, but it's going to be in just a few minutes. Now, a favorite way of preparing trout, of course, is, is sauteing them in butter. And when you're at a Northwoods cabin sometime, you might want to try something a little special, you know, a recipe that has a gourmet touch. And for this recipe, what we'll need is a green pepper, an onion, some cheddar cheese soup for a topping, a few peppercorns, uh, some thyme, a medium-sized carrot, along with a bottle of white wine, probably need the whole bottle. Might as well check the label and buy Michigan wine as long as you're cooking a Michigan trout. And you'll also need some wine vinegar. And that's about it, except for the trout, of course. Now, in this case, we're going to uh, cook one trout, and this recipe is for poached trout. Now, poaching is a method of, of cooking where it's, it's sort of boiling the meat, or boiling the fish, in this case, on the stove. And the first step is to put the trout in a shallow frying pan and cover it halfway with water. Now the reason that we're just covering this halfway is that uh, we're just actually measuring out the liquid at this time. We want equal parts of water to wine. So now we're going to add enough wine to cover the trout. So that'll give us a one-to-one -one ratio. Now obviously it's best to use the smallest fry pan that uh, you can fit the trout into, otherwise you'll end up using an awful lot of water and wine. Uh, an omelet pan really seems to work out pretty well. It has sloping sides. Now, I know this seems strange, but uh, we did take the trout out of the pan, set it aside for a while. The only reason we put it in there originally, as I said, was to measure out the liquid. And then what we do is we chop an onion, oh, about a half of an onion, and put this into the liquid along with half of a chopped green pepper. 
Next step is to chop the carrot and add this to the soup, followed by five peppercorns. And we add a pinch of thyme, followed by one tablespoon of wine vinegar, more or less. Of course, part of the charm of gourmet cooking is playing like you know how much of each ingredient you're putting in. When you're just cooking one trout for yourself, you can take a few liberties. Of course, most people would take liberties with the wine maybe than the vinegar, but uh, it was a rough day. Anyhow, we set this nutritious liquid on the burner and simmer it for about 20 minutes. Now the vegetables will cook down into really sort of a luscious smelling soup. And after about 20 minutes, when this is on the stove, you add the trout. Now the sauce we're gonna pour over the trout is made by whipping some hot cheddar cheese soup. And we do this without diluting the soup from the can and in order to heat it without burning the pan, it's a good idea to use a double boiler. Or at least put one pan inside of another pan of boiling water. This will prevent it from burning and sticking. You could heat it in a saucepan, I mean, if you want to, but be very careful with the heat. And without an automatic dishwasher in the cabin, really, you don't want to burn any pans. Now, you do dilute the soup with, uh, if you're going to follow this, this recipe exactly, you dilute four tablespoons of the poaching liquid with one-fourth of a can of the cheddar cheese soup. In this case, I just dumped it all in together, just sort of improvised. I couldn't figure out what I was going to do with three-fourths of a can of cheddar cheese soup. So I just made a big batch of the topping. Now, I whipped it there with a fork, which is all we had at the cabin, a wire whisper, or a beater might be better for this. But uh, again, they're sort of murder to wash in a North Northwoods cabin. Now, this is a pretty fancy meal. I thought I might as well dress for it. And uh, since this was poached trout, I wanted to look good for the occasion. The trout and I were both garnished in green, and we sat down to enjoy this meal together. Now, this really is how you can poach a trout and not have to worry about the conservation officers. And if you'd like to poach a trout yourself, you can pick up this recipe in the summer recipe booklet for a Michigan weekend. Now, I'm gonna have to have one more try at catching a trout during this next commercial break. I'm gonna give it a try anyway. And if you wanna be a good camp chef, you know it really helps to have the best equipment. And this is where Meyer Thrifty Acres can help you out. Corningware Grabbit Plus is the name of the set, and you should check it out this week at Meyer. This Corningware is easy to clean, dishwasher safe, and what's more, leftovers are no problem. Freeze food right in these, pop them in the oven, or put them on the stove without thawing. That's right, cook on top of your range, in the oven, or in a microwave. At Meyer, the cornflower design is only $16.97, spice of life or wildflower pattern only $19.97. Check it out this week at Meyer. I know, I said I'd have a fish after the commercial. Well, unfortunately, my creel is still empty. But you know, I've had just a fantastic time out here trout fishing. It's an outstanding experience. That's really what the outdoors is all about. But I guarantee you, by the end of the summer, I'm gonna be able to catch these clever little brown trout, these little rainbows. But now that's something I have to work on in a few Michigan weekends coming up this summer. You could do the same, you know, with $30 worth of fly fishing tackle, you could get into it too. And I tell you, there's hardly a better way to spend a Michigan weekend. We'll see you next week.